Hello guys, good afternoon. I hope you will be fine. <clears throat> Please confirm to the chat option. Can you hear my voice? So guys, we are going to discuss today topic number 1.5, it's uh, 1.3, it is unit number one, obviously we are discussing. So last time we covered topic number 1.1 under unit one, huh? under unit one, we covered 1.1, which was introduction. Then we covered 1.2, which was about what? Balance sheet, statement of financial position in which we discussed the definition of assets, liabilities, equity, and their items. Okay. So today I'm going to start with 1.3. First, as I told you many times, first five chapters will take <clears throat> too much time. The reason in five units, we are going to cover many, many topics. There are so many topics which they're trying to put into five units. So today topic which we are going to talk about that is called income statement we will discuss. Plus, we will discuss statement of comprehensive income. This is what we are going to discuss today. Okay. Like what is the income statement and what is the statement of comprehensive income? Their format we will discuss. Plus, we will talk about presentation. Okay. So starting from one point, this is the topic today. So first we are going to <clears throat> talk about income statement, which is also called statement of profit and yeah. loss account, right? So income statement always reflects our which information? Okay. Operation. Okay. Balance sheet always reflects financial information at particular date. Okay. But income statement reflects operational information for the period. Like whatever revenue, or expenses you have incurred throughout the year. So what we got at then we got the profit or loss. This is what is called operational information. Okay, and mostly under uh, income statement, the final value or the final thing for which we are looking for is your profit and loss. Profit and loss is also called net income or net loss. <laughs> yes, please switch off your mics. Thank you so much. So here we go. Mostly in income statement, we are starting from scratch and we will move to the advanced side. Mostly in income statement, we have four items in total. So one item is known as what? Revenue. Revenue. Revenues. Huh? Mm -hmm. Second I'm putting here, that is gains. <clears throat> Third we have here what? Expenses. Mm -hmm. And fourth item mm -hmm. we have losses. So the result of these four elements will be either your profit or loss. So we need to understand first the definition of what is the revenue. <coughs> okay. So revenue definition we are going to discuss. So here we go. Guys, revenue, it's a technical definition. This definition is from framework over which your accounting is based. Based on this definition, mostly we treat like this item is revenue or this item is gain. These are the definition from the framework. Let's understand first definition and I will quote the examples for this. Guys, they're saying revenues are inflows. First thing, something you are receiving. Okay, I'm stopping this. Revenues are inflows from your what? From your ongoing major R central operations. For example, let's understand first this word. 
For example, if you are running a grocery stores, so your operation is what to sell the items, like consumable items, whatever you have, right? Yeah. So whatever money you will receive through the sale of grocery items, that will become your revenue. You are into grocery store business. For example, suddenly you sold the air conditioning system of the building. It's not your operational activity. Right or wrong? So here, if whatever you will get profit or loss, that will be the part of gains. So revenue may be say it is from your ongoing, ongoing, or it is from your operational, or it is from your yes. central activities. Okay. This is the first definition. Second definition, sometimes revenues are defined this way. It is other enhancement of assets. Sometimes your assets are increasing. So do you record as a revenue as, as also? I can give you a couple of examples for this, for other enhancement of assets. For example, <coughs> let's know someone has gifted you the asset, right? So mostly what we can take the entry, we can tap the assets, even it is free, but business is receiving assets, asset is there, resources there, you can tap the assets, credit the other revenue, but it is kind of revenue. Another example, when you make the sales on credit, so what entry you pass, you tap the receivables, credit the sales. So this is your asset, which is enhancing, but it is booked as a revenue also. Third, sometimes we have a settlement of liabilities is also treated as revenue in certain circumstances. What is the example in your mind? Let me give you an example. For example, you know, unearned revenue, maybe I have heard this word so many times, unearned yeah. revenue. For example, you paid a tuition fee in advance. For us, we should double the entry cash and credit what? Liability, not a revenue. The reason against this, against your fee, we have to provide you the services. By the time our services will be over, or maybe on a monthly basis, what we can do, we can dabble to the liability and we can credit to the revenues. It means you can see here liability is being settled here. So settlement of liability, sometimes it is also treated as your revenue. Got it? Can I switch off your mics, please? Okay, so I told you three definitions. Inflow from operational activities, enhancement of assets, or settlement of liabilities. <laughs> then guys, we have another definition I'm going to explain what expenses. Expenses are opposite to the revenue. First of all, these are outflows. Like, you know, you pay insurance, salaries, rent. So these requires outflows. So it is from where? From your ongoing, for your ongoing major are central operations. Like to conduct these operations, you incur some cost. So those are called your expenses. Sometimes it is treated also, it's, it's written also, sometimes this way also. It is the other usage of like depreciation. When you use the asset, the appreciation is calculated. That is recorded as expense. Right? Third example is what? Incurrence of sometimes you are incurring liability, but it is recorded expense also. For example, salary is payable. Interpret this as the expense, credit the liability. Liability is recorded, but on the other end, expense is also recorded. Right? So these are the definition of revenues and expenses. Clear? Now I'm going to explain the word what? Gains. For example, maybe you hear the word revaluation gains. Like when you revalue your assets to the market value, sometimes you got a gain if market value is more. Sometimes you got a loss if market value is less. So gains, revaluation, reserves, you always write under which section? You always write under A to D section. Right or wrong? So that is why gains are we can define. These are increases in equity. So other name of the word for equity is also what? Net assets. It is the increase in equity other than from revenues or investment by owners. Okay. It's not your capital. It's increase in value of something. Like asset value is a given example. 
if you will reverse this scenario, it will become the definition of losses. Losses are what decrease in equity or in net asset other than expenses and distribution to owners. Distribution to owners is a dividend you are paying. It's distribution to owner. It's not your loss. Right or wrong? It's apart from that, as I told you, if you have a revaluation loss. Another example, maybe you have, uh, you bought some stocks of the other company and you are recording at fair value. Last year, fair value was higher. This year, fair value is lower. So there will be a loss. So these losses are treated in the equity section. So these are called losses, but these losses will also be reported under income statement. Okay. Other side, it will be reported in the equity section. Double entry, double fact. Okay. So this is the definition. Clear? Now, you have to memorize this list. Like these transactions are never recorded in the income statement. You have to memorize this list. Let me explain one by one. For example, transaction with okay. owners. Let's assume when owners invest into the business. What entry we pass? We debit the cash, credit the capital. So see, both are balance sheet account. Nothing will go to income statement. And when you pay the dividend, it's also a transaction with owner. Like you will debit the retained earning. We will study dividend accounting. Don't you worry. You will debit the retained earning, credit the dividend payable. Right or wrong? So both are balance sheet account, nothing will go to income statement. It means transaction with entry. You don't need to memorize. I'm just quoting entries to explain. So you have to memorize this word. Transactions with owners are never recorded in the income statement. Got it? Second statement you have to remember prior e period adjustment, some, some like such as error, error correction. Now you made errors maybe last year even in the income statement. You don't need to adjust income statement itself because income statement outcome is the net income. And net income is always written under retained earning. So you can adjust the retained earning, which is balance sheet item, not the income statement item. So it means corrections of error last year's, prior years. You can record under balance sheet like equity section you can adjust. Okay, so this is also not recorded there. Third item is what? Items reported initially in what? Other companies income. Don't worry, this we will study today. So there are four items as per gap, which we always record under other companies income. We don't record into income statement. Okay, <laughs> we will see what it is. Don't you worry. Just remember the statement here. Other items included in other companies income <coughs> are also not recorded in the income, income statement. statement. Okay. Then guys here, Item number four, transfer to and from appropriated. Yeah. Appropriate means say sometimes you have a property, it means you have profit actually, accumulated profits. So sometimes you will fix some portion of the profit for specific reason. Oh, this much money is for acquisition of non assets. For example, I have $100. I'm saying $20 is for rent payment. This is appropriated now. And $90 is unappropriated. So I can shift from unappropriated to appropriated or from appropriated to unappropriated. Then movements from one to others is, will be done under retained earnings action only, not in the income statement. Later on, retained earnings is a part of balance sheet. So that is why these adjustments are not recorded where under. Income statement. Income statement. Clear? You have to memorize this list. Then, one more word you have to understand. <clears throat> All the ledgers, ledgers relevant to income statement items, like revenue and expenses. So those ledgers are called which ledgers? Temporary. Those are called what? No. Nominal ledgers also. Why? Because every year we close it to the income statement and then next year we open again. 
right or wrong? That is why it's called what? Temporary ledgers are permanent ledgers. Clear? Done? So now, guys, let me tell you one more concept because we are moving to the income statement format side, all relevant concepts I'm explaining. So one more concept that is called which concept? Matching concept. What is matching? Matching means say when you record the revenue. For example, I have recorded revenue in 2022. So all the expenses which I have incurred to generate this revenue, I will record in the same accounting period. This is called matching. Like a revenue is relevant, all expenses should be recorded in the mm -hmm. same accounting period. Revenue is a relevant expense. Should be recorded in the same accounting period. This is called what? Matching. Mm -hmm. And the best example for that is sales <laughs> versus cost of goods sold. When you record the sales, you record the cost of goods sold. Okay, this is why we are doing due to matching. Mentioned. So here, guys, I'm going to explain first how to get the cost of goods good sold calculation, just cost of goods sold, which will be the part of income statement. Okay, so these two format you also need to memorize. I will explain. You need to memorize because from here question will be tested. How will be tested that I will show you the reversals. <clears throat> Mostly we have two types of businesses. Okay, one types of businesses are called retailers. Retailers like grocery stores, they buy a ready-made product and without significant modification, they sell it. That is retailer. <clears throat> and retailer always have inventory in shape of finished goods. In shape of because they buy as it and they will sell as it. Right? And then we have a second business which is called what? Yeah. Manufacture. Right? Manufacturing means to say, guys, they, these are those organizations, obviously, they buy material, they work, they put into working process, and then they convert into what? And finish goods. So that is why manufacturing business they might have inventory in three shapes they might have inventory <clears throat> in shape of material which is called raw material they might have inventory in shape of work in process they might have inventory in shape of <clears throat> finished goods so but i'm going to tell you the first cost of goods sold for retailers okay all right And this is the normal formula which you can follow <coughs> to get the cost of goods sold for retailer. This is the formula, obviously, everyone knows it. So, this, let's see what I'm doing. So, first of all, because here, as I told you, you will have inventory in shape of finished goods. <coughs> you will start first, first item will be the beginning inventory, beginning inventory of which goods of yes, finished goods. Right? Then you will add here what? Net purchases. Net purchases means the purchases minus purchase returns. Yeah. This is called net purchase. Then you can add, add also what? Yeah. Freighting, which is called transportation in cost. Carriage cost to bring the material. If you will add these items, this is called what? Cost of goods available for sale. From there, you have to separate what? Ending inventory, unused raw material. Oh, sorry, it's finished goods, which is not yet sold at the end of the period. So that you will subtract. This gives you what cost of goods sold. Okay? Yeah. This is the straight equation. Now, guys, in shortcut, if well, let's assume this, this item is, let's assume this is missing. Value in the question. What is missing? Net purchases. So you can calculate, but other values are given. <clears throat> How you can calculate? I can go back, I can go reverse from here to above. Right or wrong? 
And when you go reverse, plus will become minus, minus will become plus. For example, you will write on your calculator this value. Now you will minus what? 318. Minus what? Beginning inventory. Automatically on your calculator, whatever positive value you will get, that will get purchases. Right or wrong? Yes. Another thing. For example, I want to calculate this value now. What is this value? Cost of goods available for sale. Please remember, we have two ways to do it now. We can come from top to bottom, or we can go from bottom to top. For example, if you to the beginning inventory plus net purchases plus creating, you will plug these three values. This will give you cost of goods available for sale. If these three values are not given, then it will tell you cost of goods sold. <coughs> you will add, because you're going reverse now. Yeah. Add what? Ending inventory, and you will reach to this value. Right or wrong? You have to open your mind, please. Huh? Got it? This is <clears throat> cost of goods sold for me. Now, guys, here we are going to talk about cost of goods sold for what? Manufacturing. Mm -hmm. First, I would request you to go through this complete formula. Then I will explain. Just go through. Just to familiarize yourself with the widening. Just go through, guys. <clears throat> Uh, so you have gone through it. <clears throat> so now, guys, we are going to discuss the format and see how many questions can be tested from this format. Actually, for manufacturer, we always have inventory in three shape, right? We might have an inventory in shape of raw material. We might have an inventory in shape of working process. You might have inventory in shape of finished goods. So these three things we need to adjust while calculating the cost of goods. So we are going to start with first raw material. So this is how it will work, guys. So first of all, you will take, this is the raw material section. Huh? First, we will start here. We will start like that. We will take beginning direct material inventory. He will tell you the question. Like raw material inventory at the start of the video. <laughs> we'll take this value. You will add air purchases during the period. If you have purchase returns, you will subtract. So then you will subtract what? Ending material inventory. Like unused material which you have at the end of the period. So this gives you this gives you what direct material used in the production. Right? Clear? Maybe in the question I'm asking you, for example, you have you are look, you are going to calculate this value. 
opening raw material. So you can go reverse. Yeah. Take on your calculator material used, add yeah. by closing, yeah. less purchases. I don't even really reach to that value. Yeah. Okay. Then guys, once you got the direct material used in the production, So after that, you will add, this is called conversion cost section. Which section? Conversion, conversion cost. cost. What are the conversion costs? Right. The cost which you incur to convert the material to the finished goods. Mm -hmm. And most of it is labor and overhead, obviously. So you will add your conversion cost. So that is that will be given with the name of labor cost you will add. Then you will take care of overhead cost, like other costs like electricity, etc. So that you will also add. So if you will take raw material used plus labor plus overhead cost, this is known as total manufacturing cost. <laughs> Got it? Okay, now I'm asking you a question. I'm saying that I want to calculate this value now. This value you want to calculate. There are two ways now. You can come from top to bottom, like from this side to this side, or you can go from here to this side. Right or wrong, be aware, huh? If you're going reverse, how you will do? You will take total manufacturing cost minus overhead cost minus labor cost. I will reach to this. After that, guys, once you got total manufacturing cost, now this area we are adjusting for work in process. Work in process values will be given. You are not required to calculate anything. Otherwise, otherwise, we will study how to get these values and the process cost. So, what you will do, you will add here beginning work in process inventory yes. and you will deduct here what? Ending work in process inventory. Then you took total manufacturing cost plus beginning work in, in uh, work in process inventory plus ending, ending work in process inventory. You got it here, but cost of goods sold, wow. manufactured. Okay, like this is the cost. This 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 is the cost of goods manufactured, completed items. Once you reach to this value, now look at here. For example, I'm saying that in your exam, you in your exam now, I'm saying that you have to calculate this value. What this value? Total manufacturing. You can come from this to this, or you can go from from here to this value. Right or wrong? Yes. You have to read, you have to open your mind, read the question and see which way you can go. Yeah. If you will not memorize the question, you can't solve the question. Now you reach to which value to the cost of goods? Yeah. Manufacture. Yeah. Now this section you will deal with the finished goods. We will tell you the values. Right? So we will take, we will add a beginning finished goods inventory. And then we will subtract what? And the finished goods inventory, this is known as what? Cost of goods. Right? Clear? That's it. So this is what is the format for cost of goods sold. For both retailers and for manufacturers. <coughs> then, yes. now I'm going to tell you here, these shortcuts are uh, it's written. Reversals. I told you already how to reverse from the main equation. <laughs> now, under income statement, which items we have covered? Revenues, gains, expenses, losses. Expenses might include what? <coughs> General and administration expense. Expenses might include what? Selling. So, please remember these two expenses are known as operating expenses. Operating expenses category includes which two? General and administration and what? Selling expense. Selling, selling expense means selling cost. General administration like administration's cost like accounts department salary, HR department salary, like that. Okay. Then we have a, you have another type of expense that is called what? Interest expense. Interest expense is also known as Finance cost. As I told you, administration and selling cost is known as operational cost. So, 
in first cost is known as known as finance gas tax, right? Then you might have a tax also, etc. Do we write dividend as expense? Dividend as expense income statement? No, no, we don't write. Please, we don't write. Now here we go, reaching to the main point. Guys, can come to the chat option. Is that clear? Reduction from retained earning. If it is not paid, it will be treated as liability also. Done. Now we are talking about income statement formats. So there are <clears throat> two ways to present income statement. You have to remember these words. Huh? One is called single step. Second is called multiple step. Single and multiple. What's the difference? Mostly practically we follow multiple steps, but single step you also be aware. Both formats are allowed uh, as per US DAP. This is how single step will look like shortcut. Then I will tell you a little bit today. You will always make two sections here. How many sections? The first section is for revenue plus gains. Like all revenue and gains you will write under this heading. <clears throat> Second heading you will have for what? Expenses and losses. This is second section. All expense like tax expense you will write here. In cost expense, you will write here, administration, cost of goods sold, you will also write here. Right or wrong? So you are just making two groups. <clears throat> First group is for what? Revenue and gains. Second group is for what? Expenses and losses. And this revenue and gains minus expense and loss, this will give you direct you net income or net loss. So here, this no, remember this note, no concept of gross profit. You don't calculate gross profit. Directly, you calculate the Net income. Okay. So professionally, multi step income state or uh, single step income statement will look like that. This is the complete form. Okay. When you prepare the financial statement, so you will always write first name of company, then you put the name of statement, then you will put for the year ended for which year you are producing. And here you have two groups. And second is in revenues, you have not seen other revenues gained, everything you put it here. So, this is total of revenue gain. And the expense losses, you have put it every expense and loss here the cost of goods sold, selling, general administration, interest, etc. These are total of expenses. You will take this minus this, this will give you okay. that. Done? Now we have a multiple step income statement. Multiple step. Does multiple step normal format you follow this practically? Yes. So you put it here. I'm putting here multiple yes. step income statement, but here look at the heading. What it is written without yes. what it is, I will explain later. First time talking about simple format. So you will place sales, less cost of goods sold, equal gross profit, less selling expense, less advance. So these are called operational expense. This is called now income from operations, which is called profit before interest and tax also. Okay. 
if you have other revenues, other gains, other losses, you will put it here. Plus minus. Huh? Then you will get what income before tax, tax which is called profit before tax also. From there, you will subtract what? Income tax. Income tax expense. This is called your revenue. Right. This is called which statement? Multiple step income statement. Okay, so here we go. Now we are going to talk about what if you have what? We have see the note. What's written? Multi step income statement with this kind of notation. So let's understand this very first. Just comparing a definition. This kind of operation is what? These are those operations explaining what? This continued operations. The definition. The definition of one, these are those operations. Those operations. Operations means it could be a product line. For example, Toyota is having product line, Corolla, in fact, uh, Fortuner, Land Cruisers. Yeah. So it could be any one product line, like maybe Corolla or maybe Land Cruisers. And it could be any geographical area. Geographical area. area. Okay. Which, <clears throat> which has, has already closed, already, Closed during the year or held for sale. What <coughs> or held for sale. for sale that is called discounted operation. What's the point that we explain? For example, you have a three product line, mostly I'm putting this example just to make it easy. For example, you have a land cruisers, Corolla car. And you have a fortune, for example. So these are three product lines. Let's assume fortuner is loss making. What loss making? We are making loss for the Toyota company. Just assuming now you are a board member of the Toyota company. Maybe during the year you have already closed this product line. So you said Khali Valley, we don't want anymore. It will become discontinued operation because you closed it. Or maybe you are bored, you have approved the plan, okay, next year I will close it. This is called now held for sale. It's not yet closed, but it is approved to close. That is called what? Held for sale. Either it is already sold or it is held for sale. So this falls under which operation? This continued operation. So what standard sales? Standards, a requirement of the standards are, they're saying that you have to present, like while preparing the income statement, if you have a discontinued operation, then you have to split your income statement into two parts. Okay, into two parts. I'm just putting here value. Huh? They're saying if you have discontinued operation, then if we uh, which operation? This continuous this operation. And I told you the definition for this. Right? So then you have to split your income statement. Like this here. You have to put first part of the income statement. Put the heading. Income from continued operation. Please understand here what I'm putting here now. Income from first give this heading. For example, I'm saying that my current operation is land cruiser plus crow income. I will write there what? I will write there sales plus what? Cost of goods sold. Now see all this information should belong to what? Crow and land cruisers is equal to gross profit right then minus what expenses i'm just doing short 
minus what? Expenses, operational expense. Let's assume this is your PBT. PBT I'm saying, and trust I have already subtracted, for example. Okay. From there, you will subtract what? Tax, tax expense also. Net. This is known as not net income. This will be known as income from income from credited operation. Huh? Income from continued if you do not have discontinued operation, then this will be known as net income. No. But because you have a discontinued operation, so that is why whenever you have discontinued operation, you have to present separately the information of continued operation separately and discontinued operation separately. So this was from continuing operation, right? Understood? Now what you will do? You will now plus minus. What? Plus minus. You have to put another section here. What? Income or loss. I'm putting here one word. Net of tax. From which operation? Okay. From discontinued operations. And please remember here, here we will present a single amount. What? Single amount that of tax. Obviously, for example, will be closed. Fortune in the on 30th June. At least six months it, it's operated. From January to June. From January to June, you will have sale. What you will have? Sales from Jan to June. You will have a sale. Cost of sale of fortune is equal to gross profit, etc. You will get, you will reach to the income from which operation? From discounted operation. This all detail you will provide under disclosure. Under disclosure. Disclosure means a footnote. But here, under income statement, you will put only the main one single amount. One single amount, which is already net of tax. You got my point? Into the main format, you have to show only one single, one single amount of this kind of operation. But detail like sale, cost of sale, blah, 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 mm -hmm. of this kind of operation, it will be disclosed in the notes. Mm -hmm. So once you got income from continued operation, plus minus income from this kind of operation, so this is known as your now net. net income. This is what is called multiple step income statement along with discontinued operation. Got it? <clears throat> Done, right? Income statement is done. Yes, guys, please confirm through the chat option. Two words are what? Which you have to remember. First, single amount present in the main format. That should be net of tax. Don't forget this one. And the detail of this kind of operation, you will present where in the footnotes in the disclosures. And now, if you have discontinued operation, how you will get net income? Income from continued operation plus minus income from discontinued, discontinued operation. This is known as your net income. If you do not have this this continued operation, if you do not have, then this value, which value, guys? This value will be known as net income if you do not have discontinued operation. And how you will define discontinued operation? It is any product line, a geographical area, maybe UK 
country you are going to close, India you are going to close, UAE you are going to close, this geographical area. Right? It is a product line of geographical area which has already been disposed of or closed or, or which is held for sale. Okay? Now I'm going to tell you another statement. It's written everything in the sheet. I'm just using time to pass the time. When I write, so my speed is a bit slow, otherwise I'm very fast. So now we are discussing a statement of of comprehensive income. Huh? It is also called shortcut SOCI, Statement of Comprehensive Income. It's another statement. Okay? And how it is presented or what items are there. Guys, I'm first telling you shortcut state. Look at the last two words. What is CI? Comprehensive Income. Comprehensive Income. <coughs> comprehensive income is always equal to what this shortcut format net income plus minus OCI. OCI stands for other comprehensive income. If you will add these two items net income and what other comprehensive income. So this is known as now comprehensive income and these two things obviously Comprehensive income is presented under which statement? Under statement of comprehensive income. Got it? So it means one item is there that income. Other item is there other comprehensive income. So how it is presented now? How it is presented? So there are two presentation ways. There are two presentation ways. The ways to present. Two methods. First way is called I will explain. No worry. First way is called one Continuous or consecutive, one continuous statement, one continuous statement this is the first method. I will show you how it will work. And second method is known as two separate but consecutive. Consecutive statement. There are two methods to present the statement of comprehensive income. First method is what? One, one, one continuous statement. That is called what? Two, two separate, separate but consecutive one. statements. As we discuss for income statement, single step and multiple steps. So same way, we have two different ways to present. Both ways are acceptable. Any one way you can follow. Ready? Here we go. And don't forget. Comprehensive will include always two items, net income, net income plus minus other comprehensive. Right? So how it will work now, let's have a look. So I'm going to explain first one continuous statement. Assume this is your page. This is your one page. Okay, one can statement. So you will write like that state heading statement of comprehensive income. And don't forget, and, and into that you have to put net income and other comprehensive income. So net income, how you got? You got income from which operation? Continued operation plus minus income from this continued operation. Right or wrong? This is known as what your net income. Like full income statement, you will paste here. Full income statement. Don't put the heading only. Full income statement is what? Like give the heading income from continued operation right inside. Sales, cost of sales, blah, 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 blah. 
then plus minus income from this kind of relations, which will give you what? Net income. It means up to this, this is full income statement, right? Yes. Full income. income statement, right along up to this point. Full income statement you have to place. Full income statement. Right? After that, you will add here plus minus. Which items? Other comprehensive income. And please, guys, other, other comprehensive income, how many lines count? One, two, three, and four. How many lines are there? Four. It means there are four items. What those I will explain to you. There are four items which you have to record under other comprehensive income item. Obviously, for example, I will make the total of this, total of these four items, and I will place it here. Right or wrong? Now, what I'm adding? What I'm adding, guys? I'm adding these two values. I'm adding net income plus minus other, other comprehensive income, and this will be known as what? Comprehensive income. Got it? Clear? This is the one way to present. This is called one continuous. Thus, you will put full income statement copy paste. Into that, I will add other comprehensive okay. income, four items. <laughs> if I will all add these things, this will become your comprehensive income. Under continuous. Clear? Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you two separate but transactive. Here it means you have two different pages. You are using two different pages here. That's why it's called two separate but transactive. So for example, <clears throat> for example, and this is your page number one and this is going to be your page number two. Assume. In page number one, you will paste full income statement. Paste what? Copy paste full income statement. Full income statement here. How you will get? You will put it income from continued operation. And how you got this value? You have to paste full. Say last cost of sale, blah, 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 blah. Right? Then you will do plus minus what? Plus minus income or loss from this continued operation. It is equal to what? Yeah, this is your first page. First page is ended. You go, you reach to the net income. Now this is your first page, huh? First page. And this is now your second page. And second page, what you will do? You will take this item, first put it here as first item. Put here net income. First value, it will start with the net income, final value, net income. Then you will add here plus minus other comprehensive income. And how many items are there? One, two, three, and four. So you will get the total here. So make the total of these two values. This is known as you are now comprehensive. This is called two separate but consecutive statement. Done? Now from here, what is pending to understand? The pending thing is other comprehensive income. Which four items are there? Accounting, we are not going to discuss. I'm just going to tell you practically those four items. Accounting is very big for those topics. Obviously, some we will study, some is not in your exam. In, even in CMA. Not in part one, not in part two. But at least you should be, you should memorize the name of those four items which are part of other comprehensive payment. Mm -hmm. Ready? Okay. So, write these four items also. Maybe it's written here. These are the four items. Okay. It's for under what? Other comprehensive payment. Item number one. First read the first statement. And I will tell you which keyword you have to remember.
first one you write and let me tell you which keyword you have to memorize. So here you have to take your what gain or loss on that's it. This is what you have to remember. Gain or loss on which instruments? Hedging. Okay. If you want to memorize next also on cash flow hedge, that's correct. Because there are two types of hedging is there. Fair value hedge is there, cash flow hedge is there. So here you are taking cash flow hedge, not the fair value hedge. So I would request you to memorize this statement from A till here. And this is this topic not in CMA at all. It's in CPA. Okay, remember this first point. What's the point? Gain or loss, hedging instruments. Hedging instruments are like future contracts, option contracts, swaps, forward contracts. Those are called hedging. Gain or loss in hedging instruments in a cash flow hedge. Not fair value hedge. Huh? Second is what? Read the second point now, then I will tell you what, what you have to memorize. Done. Second word, let me tell you. Unrealized gains and losses. I will give you what it is first. Let me give you an example. I bought a stock for $100 maybe one year ago or six months ago. Now today I'm sitting at balance sheet date. I bought it for $10. But at the balance sheet date, market value is $20. But still I hold the stock. So this is a gain of 10 because I bought it for 10, market value is 20 today. So this is a gain, market value is increased by 10. And I hold this stock. So this is called gain, but it is unrealized because it's not converted into cash. So this gain you have to take, unrealized gain. Unrealized gain, this gain arises due to what? This gain arises due to changes in the fair value. Well. And this, remember, you have to remember the word next also of available for sale debt securities. Like simply gain or loss. Which gain realized, unrealized? Unrealized. Gain or loss on available for sale security. Gain or loss, unrealized gain or loss on available for sale securities. Okay? So this you will take way to the other company in seven income. Item number three. Read the item number three. What's written here? Translation gains and losses for financial statements of foreign operations. But it is not a new example. Translation. Like sometimes you have assets or liabilities in the foreign countries. Right? But you are preparing current, maybe for example, you have a assets, one asset in USA and value is thousand dollars. You are living in India. Right? And you are preparing balance sheet in Indian rupees, right? Last year, what was the rate? Last year, $1 was equal to 70 Indian rupees. It means this asset should be recorded at which value at? 70,000 Indian rupees, right? This year, what happened? This year. Exchange rate, this year, what happened? $1 is equal to 90 Indian rupees, for example. It means the same asset once you will convert at 90, it will show at what? 90,000. So there's a gain or loss gain by comparing two values. So you got a gain. This is called translation gain. It could be a loss also. These translation gain or losses you are recording under where? Under other company and certain income heading. Don't take it to the income statement. Clear? 
This is called translation gamma losses. Huh? Now read the point number four. <laughs> What's the point? Yeah. Certain amount associated with the accounting for defined benefit post. Remember this word. Actually, it is about pensions. Pension. Like, you know, sometimes we have a pension funds. Are we invested into pension funds? They create the assets on behalf of military force, for example. Whenever people are getting retired from military, they are, we are taking money from those assets, which are created to the pension. Funds. So those assets where really sometimes goes up, sometimes goes down. For example, I created one asset to pay the pension to my retirees. So this asset really will fluctuate, you know. Sometimes it might go up, sometimes go down. So this is what is called dad gain or loss. You will also put where under okay. other companies of income adding. Okay. Got it? So four items I told you which one? Gain or loss on hedging instruments in cash flow hedge. Otherwise, gain or loss on available for sale securities. Translation gain or loss. And gain or loss on pension. That's These four points where do you write? Other comprehensive Other income, which is the part of comprehensive income statement. Right? Clear? So, these things I have already explained. Like, we have a one continuous R2. Separate okay. for this presentation, I've already shown you. Okay, guys? Clear? This is what is called statement, income statement and statement of comprehensive. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you next statement, which is called what statement of? Changes in <laughs> Okay. Normally, First, we understand what is the equity, which items are there, and where, what you write in statement of changes in equity. Equity, which is also called what? Net assets. Because it is always equal to assets minus, liability. that's why it's called net assets or equity. But my point is not to explain that. My point is to explain which item, you know, equity. Section is there, it's always written in balance sheet, right? Equity section we have here in the balance sheet. Right or wrong? And mostly there are mostly there are different items are written under equity section. So mostly it is written what shares with par value and with what with additional. Paid in capital, additional paid in capital, and additional paid in capital in short it is called APIC. Shares are written. Par value is one. For example, company has issued two shares. Par value was one dollar, but you issued at issued at five dollar, or issued at yeah five dollar. Total how many shares you issued? Two. two shares. What was the legal value of the shares? One. one. But you should get five. So when you write under equity, you will write in how many shares you issued? Two shares. Yes. Multiply by what was the power value? One dollar is the power value. So this value you will write separately at two dollars. Now the difference of power and issue price is called what additional paid in yeah. capital, which is four dollars. So you will write in additional paid in capital how much? Two shares into dollar four per share. It will be total eight. So see, maybe how many dollars you have recorded? Ten. And by the way, it was ten because you have issued two at five. So it will be ten. But you have to provide the breakup. Are you recording separately? Additional paid in capital you are recording separately. Additional paid in capital is called share premium. You know, some simple words. But we don't use the words in reporting language share premium. We should use the word additional paid in capital. 
up to BCOM level said it's okay, share premium, share premium. But in reporting, we use additional paid in capital. Okay? Clear? <clears throat> then, guys, here in equity, we have a one item is shares. Second item, what we have? Retained earnings. What we have? Retained. retained earnings are also the part of equity. And I explained retained earnings last time it's accumulated profits, which you are saving every year as a company, not yet distributed. That is called retained earnings. That is what third item is called what? What else? Here you will put it accumulated other comprehensive income. Separate. Guys, look. Here a very interesting point is there. You know how you got comprehensive income? Comprehensive income was net income plus minus OCI is equal to comprehensive income. Agreed? Actually, this net income we always transfer to the in earning section and total of what OCI will transfer to the accumulated OCI section here in the equity section. Got it? Net income will take it to the retained earning and OCI total we are taking to the accumulated. Got it? Done? Okay, this could be the item. Another item could be what? Treasury stock. Price is talking to repurchased capital, the share which you have repurchased. And this is always the negative value because all these are positive. Par value, additional paid in capital, retained earning, cumulative OCA, last value will be treasury negative repurchase. The final value you will get the total equity. Clear? Now, why? What is statement of changes in equity now? The changes in these items, which items? Shares, retained earnings, accumulated OCI, treasury stocks. Changes in these items we are recording in statement of changes in equity. Like plus minus in these. We record under statement of changes in equity. Clear? Yes. Now let me show you how statement of changes in equity looks like. Huh? Yes, going very slow today. Huh? Okay, now let's finish. So I'm just explaining format. So these things I told you. Huh? This is the format in front of you. Ignore the total column. Huh? Just ignore because total I will get this way horizontally. So, <clears throat> first put the items, whatever items you have in equity. For example, I'm, I'm assuming you have one item as retained earning column. Second item, you have After accumulated other comprehensive income. Third item, we have common, common stock. What is common stock with the par value? Mm -hmm. And then we have a common stock with the additional value mm -hmm. capital. Fourth column. Fifth column, we have what? Mm -hmm. Three. Mm -hmm. these things we have in equity. Now, how it works. So first you will put it here. <coughs> Beginning balance of every account. Obviously this you will get from last year's statement of changes in equity. Yeah? That will become the beginning of each year. Here we have a 350, 100. Ah, these are assumed values only. 40, 30, 20 negative. Register as I told you, it's negative. Huh? Then you will add your net income for the, yeah. I just told you, net income, where you will put under retained earning yeah. or under accumulated income, yeah. income, 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 only retained yeah. earning. Net income you will put only under retained earning, not anywhere else. Then you have a OCA for the period, accumulated other companies. Yeah. Income. You will write only under accumulated OCI. You will put only under into that section, not anywhere else. Then you have a common stock issue. If you issue the common stock, it might affect two accounts. It might affect common stock with the power value and additional paid in capital. Right or wrong? And then you have what? Dividend. What's the word? Not paid. Dividend declared, only announced. 
that you will subtract always from hidden earning column because it is paid from the profit. Declared, not paid, declared. Right? Whatever you announced. And then you have last item, what? Repurchase of common stock. Repurchase of common stock. For example, it will be written only in the repurchase. Let's say you purchase further $15 stocks. Now, guys, you will make the total column wise. If you make the total this wise, this is total of retainer. Money. This is the total of total CI. This is the total of commerce. This is the total of additional. This is the total of And now I will put these values to the balance sheet. Like I will put the retained earning as 400. Equivalent to CA as 120. Common stock as 50. Initial paid in capital as 10. Treasury stock as minus 35. And this will be minus my final total 650. Right? Got it? It means these values I will take to the balance sheet under equity section. Done? <coughs> Okay. What else? Permits are over. Now, guys, we have accounting. Okay, now one thing I have to explain because sometimes questions are coming from here. This column, which what is this column I'm highlighting? Retained earning. Please remember this equation for retained earning. Huh? This, is the, this is the also called statement of retained earning. By the way, you don't need to present separately. It is a part of change in equity. But in question, he will he might ask you how to prepare statement of retained earning. Statement of <coughs> okay, guys. Statement of retained earning. So this was the format. You will take opening retained earning balance, opening balance of retained earning, <coughs> retained earnings. You will add always their net income. This net income from where you are taking for, from the nice. income statement for the year. FTY stands for for the year. Okay, you will add. Okay, it's not necessarily you have a profit. You might have a loss also. You will, if you have a loss, dip, subtract net loss which you will take from the income statement for the year, right? Yeah. From here you will minus one more value, what? Dividend declared. Dividend declared, not paid. Declared is only announced. So that value, because at the time of announcement, we will study in the next class. At the time of announcement, we subtract. This you will minus. Okay, there's one more item, but they will not give you in the question. But practically it's there. Plus minus what? Plus minus, it's called, I'm changing color here because this won't be tested in your CMA. Okay, plus minus, plus minus prior years adjustments. Like as example here, like error correction. This where either you will plus or you will minus depends on the error correction. Okay, which kind of error it was. So this is how, this is how you get closing 
or ending balance of retained earnings. This is called statement of retained earnings. Okay. Done, guys. Clear, huh? Yes. Okay, I'm asking you now, guys. This is the complete format of statement of retained earning. Maybe in exam, he will give you some information and he will miss one item. For example, he missed what calculate the amount of dividend declared. For example, he is asking you to calculate the amount of dividend declared. declared. How you will get? Closing retained earning, go reverse. Closing retained earning. If you have a net loss, you will plus. If you have a net income, you will minus because you are going reverse. Minus what? Opening balance. Right or wrong? So automatically, when you will calculate, you will get what dividend declared. Right or wrong? You have to remember. If he's asking you closing balance, if he's asking you what closing balance of retained earning, obviously you will follow the right equation. Opening plus net income minus debt loss minus dividend plus minus adjustments is equal to closing. But if you, if any item before before this. Means before this, if any item is missing from here, then you have to go what? Reverse. And when you go reverse, plus will become minus and minus will become plus. plus. Right? Yes. yes, guys, formats are over. Okay. So remaining accounting because I can't finish now, obviously. We have two main topics from this chapter. This was over, we are not sure. We will ask you anything from here or not, but this is important for your understanding. Accounting, we will start from next class. In accounting, we have to study what? We will start accounting for stocks in one class, and then next class, we will study accounting for cash flow statement. This chapter is very big, I'm telling you. Chapter one and chapter four is very big. Maybe I will spend three, three classes on this. Okay, the next class, inshallah, we will cover. We will start from practical accounting. So, formats are over. So, so, so far, we discussed income statement, statement. balance sheet, statement. statement of comprehensive income, statement of changes in equity. Only one statement is pending cash flow. That we will study not next, next to next week. We will study cash flow statement itself, their calculation and format. Everything we will cover, huh? So this is these are called your financial statements introduction. So from this chapter, the most important topic is upcoming two weeks. But today, if you want to do questions, you can first repeat it before moving to the questions. If you want to do the question, you, you can attempt only the question for topic number 1.3. Because of equity and changes in equity, actually, it's a part of 1.4. Don't touch that because 1.4 we didn't study complete. I just gave you format. Right? So only you will do the question for which topic? 1.3 on. Which is about income statement and statement of comprehensive income. Only you can tackle the question of this. But before going to the question, repeat it. Don't go just blindly. Repeat and then go. Okay? Clear, guys? If you have a question, guys, you can ask me. Otherwise, see you in the next week, inshallah. Thank you so much. If you have a question, you can ask me, please.
So recordings are available for this class. If you want, you can take from management app. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much.